July 10, 1944. The sun was sinking over the horizon, casting long shadows over the fields near Brody. I stood there, rifle slung over my shoulder, watching as the sky darkened, the last rays of sunlight clinging to the earth like a final breath before nightfall. The air was thick, not just with the summer heat, but with an unsettling tension that had gripped all of us over the past few days. The Soviets were coming. Everyone knew it, and yet we acted as if we could still pretend that we had time. The 14th Waffen SS Galicia Division, my division, was part of the defensive line tasked with protecting LV from the advancing Red Army. We were stretched thin, outnumbered, and deep down, everyone sensed that we were heading into something much bigger than we were prepared for. But we were soldiers, and soldiers don't dwell on their fears. We follow orders. I joined the division out of a sense of duty. At least that's what I told myself. Back home, things had been confusing, to say the least. The war had torn our country apart, and many of us thought fighting with the Germans would help us regain something identity, land or perhaps just control over our lives. But standing here now, with the ground trembling from distant artillery fire, I wasn't sure if we had made the right choice. The camp was a strange mix of calm and chaos. Officers barked orders to soldiers who moved with the slow precision of men who knew they could die tomorrow. Some joked nervously, passing a bottle of whatever alcohol they could scrounge up, while others cleaned their weapons in silence, faces set in hard lines, deep in thought. For many of us, this would be the first major battle we'd fight in, and we had no illusions about the strength of the Red Army. Rumors had spread about their relentless artillery, their waves of infantry, and how they tore through defenses like a knife through paper. And we would have stand in their way. That night, I tried to sleep, but my mind wouldn't let me. I kept imagining the Soviet tanks, massive steel beasts, grinding over our positions, the sound of shells exploding, and the cries of the wounded. I wasn't the only one. I could hear the restless shifting of my comrades around me, the occasional cough, or someone muttering in their sleep. No one said it, but we all felt it the calm before the storm. The silence of the night felt like it was waiting to be shattered by something violent and unstoppable. As I lay there, staring up at the dark sky, I thought of home. My mother, my sister, my small village, untouched by the war for now. Did they know how close the front was? Did they know we were about to fight for our lives, for our very existence? I didn't know if I would see them again. That thought lingered in my mind, heavy and cold. I tried to push it away, telling myself that I would fight, that I would survive. But the doubts crept in, slow and insidious. Sleep finally came, but it was restless, filled with fragmented dreams of fire and steel. The faces of my comrades blurred in and out of focus. The crack of gunfire echoed in my ears. I woke up more exhausted than I had been when I closed my eyes. At dawn, as the first light spread across the camp, we received orders to prepare. The Soviets were close now, much closer than we had anticipated. I felt a chill, despite the warmth of the summer air. We were moving out, taking up positions to hold the line. As I gathered my gear and checked my rifle, I noticed the looks on the faces of the men around me. They were no longer laughing or joking. The reality of what lay ahead had settled in. We were about to face an enemy that was larger, stronger, and relentless. But we were soldiers, and we had our orders. The ground beneath us trembled again, the faint rumble of distant artillery rolling through the air like a warning. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. The storm was coming, and there was no stopping it now. As we marched toward our positions, I couldn't help but feel like I was walking into something far larger than any of us could understand. July 13th, 1944. We were dug in near Brody. Our position stretched across the rolling fields, blending into the landscape as best we could. It had been a hot, grueling day, and the sun beat down on us relentlessly. The air was thick, suffocating, and every breath felt heavy with the weight of what was about to come. We could hear the distant roar of the Red Army's artillery, growing closer with every passing hour. As I ran, I glanced back and saw the Soviet flag rising in the distance, their tanks rolling over our defenses 
like they were made of paper. The sight filled me with a cold dread. They were unstoppable. We couldn't hold them back. No matter how hard we fought, they kept coming. I froze for a moment, staring at the spot where he had been. The sight of it, the sheer violence, the suddenness of his death shook me to my core. But there was no time to dwell on it. The enemy was closing in, and I had to keep fighting. I fired my rifle, aiming at the figures advancing through the smoke. I didn't know if I hit anyone. It didn't matter. All that mattered was surviving the next few minutes, then the minutes after that. I gripped my rifle, my hands trembling despite my best efforts to keep calm. All around me, my comrades were doing the same checking their weapons, stealing glances over the edge of the trench, trying to gauge where the enemy was. I had never felt fear like this before. It wasn't the kind of fear that paralyzes you, but the kind that sharpens your senses, that makes you painfully aware of everything around you. The sweat running down my face, the acrid smell of smoke and gunpowder, the distant cries of the wounded, it all felt too real, too overwhelming. The Soviets were getting closer, their infantry swarming around the tanks. The trench beside me exploded, hit by a direct shell. I was thrown backward, the impact knocking the breath from my lungs. My ears rang, and for a moment, all I could hear was the muffled sound of chaos around me. I scrambled to my feet, my head spinning, and crawled back into what was left of the trench. My heart was racing, pounding in my chest like it was trying to escape. More explosions, more gunfire, more screams. The battlefield was a nightmare, a hellscape of smoke and flame, where life could be snuffed out in an instant. I had never imagined war would be like this. I had heard stories, of course glorious tales of bravery and honor, of soldiers fighting with courage and valor. But this, this was chaos. This was survival, pure and simple. By nightfall, we had regrouped further back, in a makeshift defensive line. The day had been a blur of violence and chaos, and I could still hear the sounds of battle ringing in my ears. We had lost so many men, so many friends, and yet the Soviets had barely slowed down. I sat in the dirt, exhausted, my body aching from the strain of the day. Around me, the survivors were quiet, too tired or too shocked to speak. We knew this was only the beginning. The Red Army wasn't going to stop. They would keep coming until they had taken everything. It began in the late afternoon. The first Soviet artillery shells screamed through the air, landing in a thunderous eruption not far from where I stood. Dirt and debris flew everywhere, and the earth itself seemed to shake under the impact. The barrage was relentless, pounding our lines without mercy. We ducked into our trenches, shielding ourselves as best we could. The noise was deafening, the sound of shells exploding, the crack of rifles, and the shouts of men all merging into one chaotic roar. As I stared out into the darkness, waiting for the next wave to come, I wondered how much longer we could hold on. The Soviets were advancing, their tanks rumbling forward like steel monsters. We could see them now, emerging through the smoke and dust, their guns blazing. The order came down the line fire. We opened up, our rifles cracking as we shot at the advancing enemy. But it felt futile. For every Soviet soldier that fell, more seemed to appear. They just kept coming, relentless, wave after wave, like a tide that couldn't be turned back. The tanks were terrifying. Massive beasts, their guns spitting death as they crushed everything in their path. We had anti-tank weapons, but they seemed so small, so insignificant in the face of those monstrous machines. One of our men, a boy barely older than me, tried to fire a Panzerfaust at an approaching tank. He stood up, aimed, and fired, but before he could take cover, the tank's gun turned on him. The explosion tore through him, and he was gone in an instant, reduced to nothing but smoke and ash. Another soldier slid into the trench beside me, his face pale, eyes wide with terror. He didn't say anything there was nothing to say. We both knew we were in the thick of it now, and there was no getting out. The only way was forward, through the fire and the fury of the battle. The Soviets were nearly on top of us now, and we were forced to retreat further back. The order came to fall back to the next line of defense. We scrambled out of the trenches, running through the fields, ducking and weaving as bullets whizzed past us. I could hear the shouts of the officers, 
trying to keep order, but it was futile. We were scattered, each of us just trying to stay alive. July 17th, 1944. Four days since the battle for Brody began, and it felt like an eternity. The constant roar of artillery, the sharp crack of rifle fire, the scream of dive bombers overhead it never stopped. The battlefield was a place of unending noise, smoke, and death. We had managed to hold our ground for a while, but the Soviets were relentless, pushing harder with each passing day. Suddenly, the order came down the line prepared to retreat. It was the first time we had heard the word retreat since the fighting began. I glanced at the men around me. Their faces were pale, their eyes hollow with exhaustion and fear. None of us wanted to admit it, but we knew what this meant. The line was breaking. The Soviets were overwhelming us, and there was no choice but to fall back. It didn't matter. The Soviets kept coming, their numbers overwhelming. We were outgunned, outnumbered, and out of time. The order to retreat came again, more urgent this time. We had to fall back, regroup with the rest of the army if there was still an army to regroup with. The heat was unbearable. The summer sun beat down on us mercilessly, turning the trenches into ovens. The air was thick with the stench of sweat, blood, and rotting corpses. Flies swarmed everywhere, crawling over the bodies of the dead and the living alike. Sleep was a distant memory. Every time I closed my eyes I could still hear the gunfire, the explosions, the cries of the wounded. The constant tension gnawed at my nerves, leaving me on edge, always ready to jump at the slightest sound. For a few minutes I stayed in the ditch, trying to gather my thoughts, trying to make sense of the madness around me. But there was no sense to be made. It was chaos, pure and simple. We were losing, and there was nothing we could do to stop it. By the time night fell, we had retreated miles from our original position, deeper into the countryside. The Soviets had taken Brody. The city was lost. As we huddled together in the darkness, waiting for the next move, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. We had lost Brody, but soon, we would lose everything. As I ran, dodging through the ruins of what had once been a peaceful village, I realized how far we had fallen. Just a few years ago, we had marched across Europe, confident in our victory. Now we were running, beaten and broken, chased by an enemy that seemed unstoppable. I stared up at the sky, the stars barely visible through the haze of smoke and dust. The war had changed. It wasn't about glory or honor anymore. It was about survival. And I wasn't sure how much longer we could survive. Our unit had been reduced to a fraction of its original strength. Men I had trained with, laughed with, and fought beside were gone either buried under the dirt or lost to the chaos, their bodies left behind in no man's land. Those of us who were still alive were hanging by a thread, barely holding on. Supplies were running low. We hadn't eaten properly in days, and ammunition was becoming scarce. We were cut off from the rest of the army, isolated in a shrinking pocket of resistance around Brody. We had been ordered to hold the line at all costs. The officers spoke of reinforcements, of help on the way, but none of us believed it anymore. We were alone, abandoned in this forsaken place. Every man knew it, though no one dared to say it out loud. Instead, we clung to our weapons, our only lifeline in the face of the Soviet onslaught. I scrambled out of the trench, my heart pounding in my chest. Around me the battlefield was chaos men running in every direction, explosions tearing through the ground, debris flying everywhere. The Soviets were advancing fast, their tanks rolling forward like unstoppable beasts. The sound of their engines filled the air, drowning out everything else. On the morning of July 17th, the bombardment intensified. The ground shook beneath us as the Soviets unleashed their full might, hammering our positions with artillery. It was like nothing I had ever experienced. The sky was filled with a scream of shells, the air thick with dust and smoke. We huddled in the trenches, clutching our rifles, praying that the next shell wouldn't land on us. We moved as fast as we could, trying to keep together, but it was impossible. The ground was uneven, churned up by days of fighting. Every step was a struggle. I stumbled, tripping over a broken rifle, and fell hard to the ground. My helmet flew off, and for a moment I lay there, stunned, the breath knocked out of me. Then I heard the sound the deep, 
rumbling growl of a tank's engine. Closer than I had realized. I looked up and saw it, a Soviet T-34, bearing down on me like a monster out of a nightmare. I scrambled to my feet, panic surging through me. There was no time to think, no time to plan. I ran, my legs burning with the effort, trying to get away before the tank crushed me under its treads. I reached a shallow ditch and threw myself into it. Just as the tank rolled past, its massive form blotting out the sun for a moment. The ground shook under its weight, and I could feel the vibrations in my bones. I lay there, gasping for breath, my heart racing, my body trembling from the narrow escape. When I finally managed to pull myself together, I crawled out of the ditch and continued moving. The Soviets were everywhere now, their infantry swarming across the fields, firing as they advanced. I heard the sharp crack of a rifle nearby and instinctively dropped to the ground. Bullets whizzed over my head, thudding into the dirt around me. I could see the flash of gunfire in the distance, the figures of Soviet soldiers moving through the smoke. I crawled through the dirt, inching my way toward what remained of our defensive line. There were only a handful of us left by now, a few scattered men trying desperately to hold on. I found a position behind a broken wall, and raised my rifle, firing blindly at the advancing Soviets. My hands were shaking, and I couldn't aim properly, but I fired anyway, hoping against hope that I would hit something, anything. As the sun began to set, painting the sky in hues of red and orange, the first wave hit us. Soviet artillery opened up, their shells screaming through the air before crashing down on our positions. The ground shook violently, and I was thrown to the dirt as a shell exploded nearby, sending shards of metal and stone flying in every direction. I scrambled to my feet, my ears ringing, dirt in my mouth, but there was no time to stop. The enemy was already moving in, their tanks rolling across the fields, infantry advancing behind them. I pressed myself against a low stone wall, my rifle trembling in my hands as I aimed at the advancing figures. My first shot missed, my nerves getting the better of me. I took a deep breath, steadied my aim, and fired again. This time, I hit my mark. One of the Soviet soldiers crumpled to the ground, and for a brief moment, I felt a surge of grim satisfaction. But it didn't last. More and more of them were coming, their sheer numbers overwhelming. July 19, 1944 The exhaustion in our bones had only deepened over the past two days. Retreating across the countryside felt endless, and the whispers among the men were filled with quiet dread. Brody had fallen, and now Alviv was within reach of the Soviet juggernaut. We were told to regroup near the small village of Zlocho, but when we arrived, we found nothing but shattered remnants of other units, all just as broken as we were. Just as I thought it was over, I heard a distant roar. At first I thought it was more Soviet artillery, but then I realized it was the sound of engines. Tanks! German tanks. Reinforcements had arrived, after all. The Soviets were pouring into the village now. Our line was breaking. I could hear the shouts of our commander, urging us to hold, to fight to the last bullet. But it was useless. We were being overrun. I fired my rifle until it was empty, then drew my sidearm, knowing that this was the end. The Soviets were everywhere, their figures moving through the smoke like ghosts. Our commander, a hard-faced man who had been in the Waffen-SS since the beginning, paced back and forth in front of us, his eyes burning with defiance. We hold the line here, he barked. We do not retreat. We fight until the last man, for the Reich, for our brothers who have fallen. Our machine gun nest had been set up in the church tower, and it had been the only thing keeping the Soviets from overwhelming our position entirely. But now, with the tanks moving in, it was just a matter of time. I glanced up at the tower and saw the muzzle of the machine gun spitting fire, cutting down waves of advancing soldiers. Then, suddenly, there was a blinding flash, followed by a deafening boom. The tower exploded in a shower of stone and dust, the machine gun silenced. There was no cheer, no shouts of agreement. We simply nodded, gripping our weapons tighter, bracing ourselves for what we all knew was coming. I had been in battles before, but this felt different. This wasn't just a fight for a strategic position. This was a fight for survival, for our very lives. 
The roar grew louder, and I saw them panthers, their guns blazing as they charged into the village, cutting through the Soviet lines like a hot knife through butter. The tide of battle shifted almost instantly. The Soviets, caught off guard, began to fall back, their advance broken. For the first time in days, we were pushing them back. Zorxo was a quiet place, or at least it had been. Its streets were now littered with debris, and the few remaining civilians scurried in and out of sight, eyes wide with fear. The village was nestled between low hills, which might have been a beautiful sight once. Now, they were nothing but traps, places where the enemy could set up artillery or tanks to rain down fire on us. We were holding them back, but just barely. The sound of gunfire was deafening, and the air was thick with smoke and dust. My comrades were falling all around me, some with cries of pain, others silently, their bodies slumping to the ground like discarded dolls. I fired again and again, each shot feeling more futile than the last. By the time we set up defensive positions, it was already late afternoon. The air was heavy with the smell of burning wood and the distant rumble of Soviet tanks. It wasn't long before the rumble grew louder and we could see them dark shapes on the horizon, slowly advancing toward us. There was no hope of reinforcements this time, no talk of retreat. We were going to make our stand here, in this forgotten village, against an enemy that outnumbered us ten to one. Then the tanks reached the edge of the village. Their cannons roared, and I watched in horror as the building next to me was torn apart in an explosion of flame and debris. I dove for cover, my heart pounding in my chest. The village was collapsing around us, buildings crumbling, streets turning into death traps. There was no way we could hold out much longer. I lowered my weapon and sank to my knees, exhaustion washing over me. The battle for Brody was far from over, and the war. The war seemed endless. But the victory was hollow. As I looked around, I saw the bodies of my comrades lying in the dirt, the village in ruins. We had survived, but at what cost? The line had held, but barely, and I knew, deep down, that this was only a temporary reprieve. The Soviets would be back, and next time, we might not be so lucky.